the spectrum and then record that spectrum for each point in the image, producing an image cube which contains a spectral signature for each point in the image from which we can determine the composition of the surface. Next graphic, please. And this is the instrument, a very special instrument, uh, the M-cubed uh, developed at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Here we are in the clean room uh, during the development process. This gives you an idea of its size. Carly Peters, uh, the principal scientist, is there with her handout uh, looking at the instrument during the alignment uh, phase. Just to give you a perspective, the instrument weighs about 20 pounds. It runs with the energy of a 20-watt light bulb and is about the size of a desktop laser printer. Uh, to give you a feel for what it is. And it's quite a compact little instrument for a very big job, which is to map the composition of the entire surface of Earth's moon. Could I have the, the next graphic, please? And now I'd like to show you some more of the spectacular results that have been returned by M cubed. The image on the left is one of our very favorites. This is one of the first images that came back on the 19th of November, 2008, which showed us on the Chandran one mission, we had a working instrument, and we were measuring exactly what we set out to measure, which were spectral image cubes where we have an image, and then for every point of that image, we have a spectrum underlying it to uh, measure the composition of the surface of the moon. And you're seeing a representation of those spectra on the top and side rainbow panels. Um, so we were very excited to see this, this result um, on the 19th of November. I've included another image cube there. This is another uh, spectacular data set collected. This is the Apollo 15 landing site. And you can see the Hadley Rill there where the Apollo 15 landed uh, decades ago. And I want to summarize that we have, in fact, almost 1,000 gigabytes of data from m -cubed returned over 10 months, all of this type to allow us to, in fact, cover more than 90% of the moon. And you're just seeing the beginning of the results and some of the highlights from the early analysis of these data. So could I have the, the next graphic, please? So having shown you some of the data sets, now I'd like to show some of the mineral results from m -cubed. This is a map of aspects of the mineralogy of Earth's moon. Here you're seeing in greens, purples, and blues, iron-bearing minerals that we've been able to map because we have a spectral signature for every point in the image that we've collected. These would be iron minerals that would be similar to the basalt lavas that you might find in the Hawaiian volcanoes, for example. The red areas are areas that contain the mineral plagioclase. Again, plagioclase, we're measuring minerals. And these are, uh, plagioclase is a feldspar mineral, which is also found in earth rocks. It's a common rock-forming mineral. So just to give you a, an indication that we're also proceeding in addition to the amazing water discovery, we've also begun our primary mission of mapping the mineralogy of Earth's moon with these data. And now, before I go to the next slide, I'd like to invite you all tonight or over the next week, if it's clear, to go out and look at the moon as you've known it, I've known it, as a white or gray object in the sky, and to realize that with an imaging spectrometer um, like m -cubed, like the other instruments we'll be talking about, really it's, the moon is much more than simply a gray body in orbit around the Earth. It is full of spectacular spectral variation, and this depiction should shift to a, a movie through the spectrum showing uh, the different colors that we've been able to derive. There you can start to see colors sweep through. This is a tour through the M-cubed data set collected so far, showing the, the amazing compositional diversity. Uh, for all of those who thought the moon was gray, it isn't. It's full of spectacular spectral content, which we can relate to composition. We've talked a little bit about the water that we've discovered with these measurements, and a little bit about the mineralogy. But we're going to know in the next decades much more about the moon thanks to these measurements. And with that, I'd like to pass it to Roger. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, the Cassini results and also more m cubed results. Cassini flew by uh, the Earth and got a view of the moon on its... Uh, on a